Hello, welcome back biologists. This is Bioscience. This lecture is all about enzymes. We've already talked a little bit about enzymes in that enzymes are proteins. So let's title our notes, enzymes. There are six things I want to tell you about enzymes today. So let's let's outline all of this first. There's six things that I want you to know about enzymes. Um, the first thing is that enzymes are proteins, just like we mentioned. Enzymes, those are proteins. Enzymes are proteins. The second thing is that they are catalysts. Catalyst. We're going to go through each of these in detail. The third thing I want you to know about enzymes is that they're specific. Enzymes are specific. Enzymes are also reusable. Enzymes are reusable. We're going to go through all of these. The fifth thing is that enzymes sometimes have coenzymes. Sometimes have coenzymes. And lastly, enzyme names. Enzyme names always end with a, S, E. That's the six things I want you to know about enzymes. So let's dive in. So the first thing is that enzymes are proteins. So one, enzymes, those are proteins. And if we remember, let's draw a little recall box over here. Recall. Proteins, those are one of our four major biomolecules. Proteins are large molecules, molecules made of amino acids. So that's recall number one. Let me scroll up a little bit. But also that amino acids, which I'll abbreviate to AA. So amino acids have, or can have, I should say, can have different properties. So amino acids can be hydrophobic, they can be hydrophilic, they can be charged, they can be uncharged, they can be a bunch of other stuff that, that we noticed when we looked at those tables of amino acids. And each of those amino acids, that sequence of amino acids influences how that protein is going to end up looking as the big form, as the folded form of that protein. So that that gives us its structural properties. So the amino acids have different properties, therefore the protein will have different properties. Um, so each enzyme then, by this whole recall, um, each enzyme then, each enzyme has a specific shape. and has a specific function. A specific function. What this means is that each enzyme is going to do its job and only its job. Enzymes are also catalysts. That's the second thing. Remember, second thing is that enzymes are catalysts. Two, enzymes are catalysts. A catalyst is something that speeds up the rate of chemical reaction. So catalyst, that 
speeds up rate of chemical reactions. Um, and just some, some chem, a little bit of chemistry here. A bit of chem. So here's our bit of chem that we'll talk about. So when we have a reaction, we can have two types of reactions, um, but remember that we have reactants. That's all the ingredients going to the products. So the reactants, those are the ingredients, the products, that's what you get out of that chemical reaction. Um, so reactants go to products, but all reactions all reactions need energy. And just so you know, these reactions that I'm talking about, we can either make take some small molecules as our reactants and make, and make big ones out of it, or we can flip that. We can take a big thing and then break it up into smaller bits. Um, so we can go from small small molecules to large ones, to big guys, or we can go from big and then break it up into small pieces. Just depends on what type we're doing. But all reactions need energy. All reactions need energy. Um, and how this works is that, well, we have particles swimming around in the world all the time, and, and they interact by chance, random chance. Um, and, and this takes energy. That energy to make that reaction take place is called activation energy. So activation energy, activation energy, I'm sorry, a bit of chem. Activation energy is the energy needed for reactions to take place. So activation energy is the energy needed for reactions to take place. And all of this is done without a catalyst by random chance. But the cool thing about enzymes, enzymes are catalysts, they speed up the rate of chemical reactions, and how they do this is they, they grab on to those reactants and say, okay, you're here, you're here, and now they're together in this enzyme. They're not interacting by random chance at that time because the enzyme is holding on to them. That's how we lower that activation energy, decrease the amount of energy needed because they don't just need to find each other by random. So that's what enzymes do. So en enzymes grab onto those bits so they don't have to just go find each other. They're already hanging on in that enzyme. So if we visualize this, I'm going to draw a graph here. I'll zoom out just a little. Um, I'm going to draw this graph. And what this graph is going to show us is the different, the changes in activation energy. So along my x-axis, my vertical axis, or my y-axis rather, my vertical axis, this is, um, the amount of energy, and as I scroll up here, um, and then my x-axis, my horizontal axis, this is time. So let's say I have two little molecules, whatever they are, and these two little molecules take this much energy to then get into their combined form. Notice now they're touching, okay? Um, so that's great, cool. But what an enzyme does is an enzyme will lower this activation energy. So now they can become this combined molecule with a lower amount of energy needed to make that reaction happen. So let's label this. This is the red is with enzyme. And an enzyme is a catalyst. So 
That is great. Good to know, right? So then the third thing I want you to know, so that first thing, enzymes are proteins. They have specific functions because they have a specific structure. The second thing is that enzymes are catalysts. They can lower the activation energy of a reaction, make that reaction happen more easily. The third thing I want you to know about enzymes, number three, is that enzymes have speci they're specific. Enzymes are specific. Specific. Enzymes are specific because they only do one job, and that's really important because that, then they get really good at that job. Um, so the science way to say this is that there's a specific chemical reaction it facilitates. So enzymes, there is specific chemical reactions, reactions it facilitates. So what an enzyme looks like is it kind of reminds me of Pac-Man in that we have this kind of circle-ish situation, and this is still a protein, remember? This little indentation that would be Pac-Man's mouth, this part here, that's called the active site. And what binds there are substrates. Substrates are like ingredients. Those are the reactants. Uh, and this is where the, the reaction kind of sort of happens. So the active site is where the substrate binds. Where the substrate binds. And so remember that reactants go to products, that's chemical reactions. And so an example of this is the reaction that's catalyzed by this guy, this enzyme catalase. So here's what it is. It's hydrogen peroxide. Peroxide. And that chemical equation is H2O2. And there's actually two of them in this reaction. And this enzyme called catalase. So in this picture, you can pretend catalase is this guy. And then hydrogen peroxide, that would be the substrate binding in this active site here. So catalase, what catalase does is it breaks up hydrogen peroxide into water and oxygen, O2. So that's an example, and catalase just keeps doing this thing, and it only does that. If you wanted to do anything else which, with hydrogen peroxide, you would need a completely different enzyme. Enzymes are specific. So the shape of that active site, remember, it's a protein. So it has this really specific series of amino acids which dictate its shape. That really specific shape of that active site will only fit, in the case of catalase, hydrogen peroxide. But in the case of any other enzyme, whatever that substrate is, it only fits that thing. So enzymes are specific. Let's move on. Okay, the fourth thing I want you to know about enzymes for is that enzymes are reusable. Enzymes, they are reusable. We can recycle them. Enzymes are reusable, which means that when we, in the case of catalase, for example, when we take hydrogen peroxide and make it water and oxygen, catalase, nothing changes about it. Hydrogen peroxide will bind, and then once it's water and oxygen, it leaves, but nothing changes about catalase. That enzyme doesn't get consumed. It doesn't get modified in any way during the course of that reaction. So how we say this is they don't undergo molecular changes. That means they don't undergo molecular changes. This is important because then we can reuse and reuse and reuse and reuse, and that means that we can do a lot of reactions all at once. Um, so the shape of the active site 
is specific for the protein, but also then the shape of the active site will not change either because the enzyme is reusable. And we call the, the how often that enzyme gets reused, we call that turnover. Turnover. Turnover is the amount of time that enzyme can do its reactions. So the amount of time, amount of time that an enzyme can convert a substrate into a product. Turnover is the amount of time that an enzyme can convert a substrate into a product. What this means is just that how, how often that this reaction can go from reactants to products, reactants to products, reactants to products. How often does that happen? And this is unique for every single enzyme because every single enzyme is unique. Um, and so it's really variable. It can actually be between one to 500,000. 500,000 um, turnovers per second. So it's really variable um, turnover. So enzymes are reusable. The fifth thing I want you to know about enzymes is that enzymes sometimes have this non-protein part called a coenzyme. So five enzymes... sometimes have coenzyme or a cofactor. Sometimes have a coenzyme or cofactor. Coenzymes or cofactors, they're non-protein components. Non-protein components and it's usually usually a metal ion like sodium like magnesium etc and so when you have that enzyme with its coenzyme buddy that's called a holoenzyme I'll write that down um, a holoenzyme, H-O-L-O, -L, holoenzyme. I kind of think of it as like whole enzyme, but it's spelled different. But still, holoenzyme, a holoenzyme is an enzyme with its cofactor. Enzyme with its cofactor. What this would look like is, okay, we have our enzyme from before. I'll draw a better active site. Enzyme, there is a better active site. And then sometimes it has this little cofactor. Let's draw in orange. So sometimes it just has a little cofactor hanging out in there. That's the cofactor or coenzyme. Coenzyme or cofactor within that blue enzyme then. And holoenzymes are cool because they help regulate if that enzyme is on or off. If that coenzyme is bound to that enzyme, then maybe it's on. If it's not, then maybe it's off. So that plays a role in how we regulate um, enzymatic activity, how that enzyme is working, basically. Um, so that's, that's the fifth thing I want you to know. And then the, the last thing I want you to know is that enzymes... Enzymes, their name ends with A-S-E. So in the earlier enzyme, or er, earlier enzyme, in the earlier example, we talked about catalase, A-S-E. All enzymes end with an A-S-E. Um, so we can talk about synthase, we can talk about kinase, and anytime you hear that 
ASE sound at the end, you always know you're talking about an enzyme, so you automatically know some kind of chemical reaction can happen with that guy, um, which is a really nice trick to know that when we throw out things that end with ASE, always going to be an enzyme. That's, that's all for enzymes. I really hope you have a great week. Um, we're getting through this semester. I really hope that you ask me questions when needed and have a great, great week.